Welcome to part 29 of the Amateur Extra License Study. This is element four. It's the last test you can take. It's the pinnacle. And we're in sub-element six Foxtrot now. We're gonna learn a little bit about voltaic cells and the like. So what absorbs the energy from light falling on a photovoltaic cell? Those are electrons. It's the only one out of there that's right. Electrons. They absorb the energy. So that photovoltaic cell, boom, light hits it, electrons flow. They go wee and they get out of there. Uh, that's what's great about a photovoltaic cell. Voltaic. All right, so next, what happens to photoconductive material when light shines on it? We would hope that the resistance decreases. So photoconductive material, when light shines on it, resistance decreases. There's a reason. Look it up. It's pretty cool. You just remember photoconductive, photoconductive, light conduction. To have conduction, resistance must decrease. What is the most common configuration of an opto-isolator or opto-coupler? And that is going to be an LED and a phototransistor. And the reason that it is an isolator or a light coupler, opto coupler, is the LED can be turned on with one voltage source, and then the phototransistor can turn on in another circuit, and it isolates the two circuits from each other. That's how they work. So you can have two different power supplies that operate the LED and the phototransistor. And I've used this personally. Back when I was a technician, I would get on 10 meters and do PSK31. I did not have the sound devices. I didn't have the money to buy the sound devices, but I did have a few dollars and a trip to Radio Shack. I bought some uh, transformers audio transformers and then i bought an uh, infrared led and an infrared phototransistor and i glued them in a straw and that way i could use that to key the radio it was an opto isolator or opto coupler you're going to see that again in just a minute what is the photovoltaic effect and that is a conversion of light to electrical energy photo light voltaic volts conversion of light to electrical energy so now you should be able to get that one if you see it on the test keep in mind though out of this section you only get one question that's why there's 50 sections 50 questions on this beast which of the following describes an optical shaft encoder that is a device that detects rotation by interrupting a light source with a pattern wheel, and it has a detector on the other side. So it kind of looks like this. Let me get this on camera. Let's pretend this is the light source. This is the detector, and it detects rotation by, whoop, that just passed through and broke the beam. One count, two counts. Now, this isn't very effective because there's only one but it's counting one RPM. Now, if you had more spokes, let's say you had two spokes, now you can do half rotation. So that's how the, the optical shaft encoder works, is it detects rotation by interrupting a light source with a pattern wheel. A lot of times the pattern could have as many as, and usually they're divisible by uh, two, I think, so like 32 might be one of them, 64, um, but you can go check those out if you ever wanted to count the rotations of a shaft. That's how it could be done with the optical shaft encoder. Which of these materials is most commonly used to create photoconductive devices? That is going to be a crystalline semiconductor. So it's not all these choices. Argon is just a gas. I don't know what that is because I didn't look it up. But crystalline semiconductors are what use photoconductive devices. So silicone is one of those, and they are crystalline, so they're crystal-like. 
you can get lost in a bunny trail or a rabbit hole looking up that kind of stuff. So just, you know, have fun with it if you want to know more. What is a solid state relay? It is a device that uses semiconductors to implement the functions of an electromechanical relay. Now, an electromechanical relay has a coil and a magnet that pulls a conductor over to create contact from your input to your output input to your output so what happens in a solid state so think of solid state like silicone and the like solid state is a device that doesn't have any moving parts so it uses semiconductors to make that isolation well guess what you know what was like my solid state relay my led and my photo detector just like it. Why are opto isolators often used in conjunction with solid state circuits that control 120 volt AC circuits? Probably because we don't want 120 volts anywhere near what we're playing with. Okay, so opto isolators, I can't even say it now that I've gotten the giggles. Opto isolators provide an electrical isolation between a control circuit and the circuit being controlled or being switched. So opto isolators and 120 volts AC is to provide electrical isolation. You don't want the two circuits to be connected. What is the efficiency of a photovoltaic cell? That is the relative fraction of light that is converted to current. So a higher efficiency would be more light is converted to current. What is the most common material used in power generating photovoltaic cells? That is silicon. Silicon. Not silicone, but silicon. Uh, I struggle with that word. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, what is the com most common material used in power generating photovoltaic cells is silicon. What is the approximate open circuit voltage produced by a fully illuminated silicon photo photovoltaic cell? And that is going to be approximately one half of a volt, 0 0.5 volts. Now, you can use them in series and get to 1.5 volts, and you know how many it would take? Three. So when you have your outdoor lighting, Usually there's probably about three of those photovoltaic cells, maybe even four, so that they can charge that one little battery on the inside. Pretty neat stuff that you can get into. I'm Robbie, W1RCP. I hope this has been a fun section. Trying to take the dullness out of studying for this uh, extra exam. It can be tough. It can be tough, but you've got this. Speak positive, think positive, study often. We'll catch you on the next one, 73.